Well, many thanks for staying with us. Citizen Weekend continues now. And with me in studio is Judy Thongori. She's an advocate. And of course, she has for a long time been known as that lawyer that just gets it done for women. A lot of women come to you, um, you know, seeking advice. Of course, a lot of women um, feel that you champion their cause. But let's begin with the fact that polygamy has been happening in the country for many years. And I want to invite your comments. Mm -hmm. And many say that the legislation merely acknowledges something that has been happening over the years. The actual uh, law does not specify how many women a man can actually marry. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's open-ended, so um, can a man now take on another wife? Ten more? Mm -hmm. Fifteen more? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, let me start first by acknowledging that is in fact true. What the law did, the Marriage Act of 2014, was just codify what has been happening from long before you and I were born. Mm -hmm. Because if you remember, at the turn of the last century, Africans practiced their customary uh, marriages, you know, their customary laws. And then in came the Marriage Act that spoke of one man, one wife, to the exclusion of all others. Mm -hmm. And even though the customary marriages were not codified. They continued side by side with the monogamous unions provided for mm -hmm. in the Acts of Parliament. Mm -hmm. So they have been there side by side. Of course, there has been confusion because you've got one written down, the other one not written down, yet existing. So you have to wait for a court of law to determine whether you are married to somebody or not under customary law mm -hmm. because there's nowhere else that it is, it is written. So come 2014, all that was done was to codify it. So now you look into a book and you know about all that there, or j just about all that there is about marriages. So that's all that was done. So you touched on customary law, Judy, yes, and I yes. want to talk about um, such a union because mm -hmm. a lot of women over the years, maybe it's just one wife, but she was married under customary law, yes. um, have not had the proof to actually say that this was my husband. So under this law mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. um, will people married in such a union be issued with a marriage certificate? Indeed. Now, first of all, we know that a marriage could be monogamous or polygamous. And we know that when you decide to get into a polygamous union, you can get a marriage certificate. Beca because you know what happened before? Was that you'd have to queue up the people who witnessed mm -hmm. um, your marriage. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, of course, the elders will probably be too old or have, you know, have died. So now you'd be able to get a marriage certificate to confirm that indeed you're married, even though polygamously. Mm -hmm. Yes. And of course, the controversy now remains um, in the sense that the National Council of Churches yes. is totally opposed to this um, yes. law. Yes. Um, and then here we have persons that actually want to marry their second or third wives yes. in church. Yes. So how then does this work? It will never happen in church or they will not agree. But it's very clear as well. You know, we have five types of marriages. We have the Christian marriage. You go to church. It's still one man, one wife, to the exclusion of all others. Mm -hmm. And then we have the civil marriage. Again, monogamous union, one man, one wife. And then we've got the Hindu marriage, also monogamous. We have the Islamic marriage, potentially polygamous or polygamous. And then we have the customary marriage, which is uh, potentially polygamous or polygamous. So it's very clear. I mean, if, you, if you're looking to contract a customary marriage, then you don't go to church. Mm -hmm. If you're looking to, to contract a monogamous union, then you don't, you don't go to the customs. So for me, there is room for everybody. It fits everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, of course, the initial uh, bill had given uh, the wife um, yes. the right to veto um, you know, who her husband will marry. Yes. That is not the case now after that clause was uh, dropped. Yes. So what have you experienced um, you know, in your profession? Has mm. this seen um, divorce rates go up? Mm. Are women now coming to you and saying, look, this woman um, is in the picture. I was mm. never made aware of this. Mm -hmm. And the man is, 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 is saying, this is the law. This is actually the law. So uh, and deal with it. Have you experienced uh, um, you know, a rise perhaps in women coming to you and saying they cannot live with such a situation? Perhaps it's too soon to tell, you know, because uh, this is this is a big issue. You know, by the time it, uh, it 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 comes into a family and causes enough concern for somebody to come to the lawyer's office, it does take time. Mm -hmm. But I suppose in time we are going to see the difference that it's going to make. But suffice it to say that if you decide to marry under um, customary law, you will know that it's potentially polygamous. Mm -hmm. If you decide to have a monogamous union, you will know that it's not potentially polygamous which was not the case before. But I just need to say that we still have a bit of confusion in the Law of Succession Act. Because the Law of Succession Act, as it is now, and uh, since it became law in 1981, still accepts that even though you are married monogamously, 
if your husband has another wife, quote, quote, you know, a person who fits in the description of a wife, of a wife that person, when, when your husband dies, could very well succeed in succeeding, in, 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 in um, succeeding him and being recognized as, as a dependent. Mm -hmm. So we do need to take this thought further into the Law of Succession Act so that there is uniformity. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, let's talk about property rights, um, which I think is, is, is another key concern for a lot of women Indeed. who feel that they are threatened and yes. particularly not them per se, but their children as well, yeah. um, and who feel that um, perhaps they don't know the way forward mm -hmm. in, in such a scenario. They don't mm -hmm. know what belongs to them, mm -hmm. property that they may have acquired together, mm -hmm. property that the husband may have acquired while mm -hmm. in that union. Mm -hmm. So what would you like to um, say to, to women um, who find themselves in, in that confused state of mind? Well, here's the thing. The Matrimonial Property Act of 2013 makes it more clear than it ever was on how property is going to be held. It says what the first wife and the husband acquired before the second wife came or the subsequent wives came belongs to the first wife and the husband. What the first wife, the husband, and the, s and the second wife acquire before the third, hu the third wife comes in belongs to those three of them and so on and so forth uh -huh. until I guess the husband is tired of marrying. Okay. <laughs> yes. Wow, very, very interesting. Yes. And I yes. also want to read a question that has come in. Yes. And this is um, a woman who is saying that mm. she had a child yes. um, with a man mm. um, that, uh, that had been living with her for a long time, a married man of mm -hmm, course um, mm -hmm. he had not married her mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but she, uh, she she had a child with him mm -hmm. and what she is asking is in in a situation like this where mm -hmm. a man has been cohabiting with you mm -hmm. has never really married you or mm -hmm. even expressed interest to mm -hmm. but you have a child together what then are your rights I see the rights of the child is what we would talk about mm -hmm. the child has rights from the father and from the mother irrespective of the relationship between the mother and the father. Okay. So whether they were married or not, it does not matter. Okay. That child will still be able to access his rights or her rights mm -hmm. from the father. Mm -hmm. It is different when it is a woman. The woman, the, that woman who's having a relationship with this man cannot make any claim to his estate or to his property mm -hmm. if he's married monogamously to another woman. Mm -hmm. But the child will certainly not be discriminated okay. upon because on the basis of the marriage. Mm -hmm. And yeah. once more, if you could touch um, on in the event of death mm -hmm. again, mm -hmm. I just um, feel that we need to touch on that uh, yes. briefly where a man is polygamous mm -hmm. um, and has probably not even communicated the same mm -hmm. to, to his first wife, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe it is known by the in-laws mm -hmm. um, and the other family mm -hmm. um, that he has married into. Mm -hmm. um, what then happens in terms of property? How do you deal with a woman who didn't even know that these women existed? Well, unfortunately, her knowledge may not be, or not, of the other woman may not be important. What is important is for the other woman to show that she has lived with this man in a manner in which she can be um, taken as a wife and she'll be entitled to inherit whether or not mm -hmm. the man was married monogamously. And that's why I'm saying there is a conflict between the time the man leaves because we tell this woman you cannot come into this uh, situation mm -hmm. and when he dies because we tell this woman you can become and qualify to be a wife. So that's an area where we do need uh, legislation to, to cause uniformity so that there is no confusion. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but let, let me just say something that uh, sometimes for, uh, people forget. Mm -hmm. When a woman thinks of polygamy for herself, a lot of women are likely to say no to it, they don't like it. And until you go out there and you speak to the people, you will find that there are so many women who live in polygamous unions, especially up country. Mm -hmm. You will find that there are so many children who live in polygamous unions. And so in the end, and in the cod codification of this law, because it was based on engagements acro across the country, there was no choice for Kenya at this point. Mm -hmm. If they failed to recognize the um, uh, polygamy, they would have done a lot of injustice to many households mm -hmm. because more women than not live within polygamous um, unions. So this law, as much as it's women who complain about it, and they should, of course, when they don't expect and they don't know about polygamy, yes, it's, it, it's enforced upon them, it is also a lot of women who will benefit from this law and a lot of children for that matter. Mm -hmm. Yes. And finally, um, mm -hmm. this may be a silly question, but mm -hmm. hi, Lillian, please ask Judy, mm -hmm. does this apply to women? Can a woman also marry two or more husbands? I know that's silly, but I mean, I, I think she's just, she has a valid point I there. She does, yeah. absolutely. I think she does, but the answer is no. Kenya hasn't reached there yet. Maybe the next codification, mm -hmm. perhaps we'll get there, but I can tell you without uh, a shade of, uh, of fear that we are not yet there where a woman can marry two husbands. Mm -hmm.
Mm -hmm. Yes, and somebody could say it's a discrimination. Of course. And perhaps it is. Of course. Yes. And, and just uh, your thoughts on this. Um, yeah. there, there are people who feel that this is retrogressive and that yes. polygamy is taking us back yes. um, in time, that we're yes. a modern society, and why yes. should we then even be talking about polygamy? Mm. You've been in this um, mm. um, career, in this yes. industry a long time. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts on this This. this entire you know scenario and and what it portends mm. for you as advocates uh, for the family union um what are your thoughts well in my younger days i'd have thought it was retrogressive and it taking us backwards in my days at present i know that law is made to serve the society and i know that a law that pretends that there is no polygamy and does not provide for the family living polygamously, then that law does not serve the community. Mm -hmm. I, I also remember at the turn of the last century, when the monogamy was imposed on people, they were living polygamously. And what happened is a lot of the men went into church and were told you need to marry one, one wife, so they did. But they lived polygamously when they went, went back home. So for me, as much as it doesn't serve women, I don't know that it serves, it, it quite serves women except in the manner in which I have said. Mm -hmm. And as much as I know that eventually people will walk away from polygamy I think it's also a gradual shift it's also giving people the right to be able to decide that this doesn't serve me and therefore I'm walking away I'm from walking it out, yes. and I think for now where we are many of our population most people in our population live within that and it would be leaving them to live under the radar under the law if we did not include them mm -hmm. yes Judith Angori, thank you so much uh, for your thoughts on that